Hey everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Natalie Rodriguez. I writer filmmaker. Um, thanks for joining. Uh, for those of you who still need a few more minutes, I give another minute or two before um, start diving into um, kind of the subject and everything. But how are you guys doing? I know with this quarantine going on, um, my sleep schedule has been a little out of um, out of sync. And you know, like today, I woke up. Oh gosh, I think like at eleven thirty. Haven't done that for a while. So very, um, you know, definitely a lot of things I've been keeping me kind of busy during this quarantine have been, I'm a big fan of media. I love books. I love TV shows. I love films. Uh, hi, Loretta. How are you? Um, definitely, you know, I wanted to kind of hop on here and chat with you guys, just kind of see what are you reading or what are you like, what movies or what TV shows are you checking out? I definitely kind of like this quarantine for many of us. I was notoriously known for saving all these, you know, films and TV shows on my Netflix, Hulu and Amazon list. And now that we're in quarantine, I've kind of been like, oh, maybe I should try checking out these shows I've been saving for years. I'm tired too, a little, right? I know it's very, um, it's a little interesting today and it's been an interesting week. Things have been, you know, busy, but I can't complain. No, busy can be good sometimes. And hi, Noelle, how are you? Oh, North Carolina, nice. Um, I'm over here in California, so it's been very, very, very hot today. I've noticed this heat's been making me, like, so exhausted. Has anyone been feeling that way, too? Like, it's been, like, maybe 90 to 100s over here. I'm located in Pasadena, California, which is just, like, 20 miles east or west from the, I'm trying to think, Burbank. It's not too far. It's, like, L.A. County. Um, awesome. I'm glad that you guys are starting to chime in. Oh, hey, Carrie. How are you? Oh, you're in Wales. Nice. How's it like over there in Wales? I'm, I've never been to the UK, so i am always wanted to go and hoping I can go to the UK um, once, you know, quarantine's over and once we kind of get the okay to travel. Oh, it is hot over there? Yeah, no, it's, it's very, it's hot over here too. Like I had three fans running earlier today. Awesome. Okay, um, it looks like most of us are logging in, so I'll go ahead and get started. For those of you who are tuning in, I'm Natalie Rodriguez, writer, filmmaker, and, you know, like many of you, I right now have been kind of trying to keep busy, trying to keep my mind off stuff from, you know, the quarantine. As you know, there's so much going on in the news, and it can definitely be draining. I mean, I've been finding myself some days emotionally or physically drained from looking on Twitter or going to Facebook and see what's going on with this COVID, um, the pandemic in general, or especially as we see right now too, um, as you notice a lot of films in, uh, or films and TV, they're being pushed back or postponed because of this quarantine. Um, over here, I know most of our theaters are still shutting down or some theaters, movie theaters are even being canceled from reopening. So it's been a little, it's a very weird time and, you know, it's also can be scary. And I understand a lot of you might be feeling confused or even like me, um, emotion drained some days. So it's, it's been, um, a time to definitely like start adjusting to new coping mechanisms, how to keep ourselves like preoccupied and not be so stuck on our phones. I'm definitely guilty of being stuck on my phone. Um, you know, I'm a big Twitter fan and I love looking at Twitter, see what's trending and, it's very scary to see what's going on, especially this past week. I feel there's breaking news every like 30 minutes on Twitter. Oh, hello. Hey, Dana from Kentucky. It's nice to meet you guys virtually. But I want to talk about um, some books and some movies and television shows I've been checking out um, during this quarantine, um, especially right now. I've been wanting to like kind of get back into like uh, different um, art other artists' work and see like what everyone else is working on and whether it's before quarantine or afterward, or, you know, even books or projects in the months to come. Uh, I don't know if some of you guys are a fan of Game of Thrones, but the author just announced yesterday that he's releasing his book. I think it's in February, 2021, if not mistaken. Um, so I'm actually very excited to check that out. I'm curious to hear um, what's going to happen, especially, you know, with everything kind of being up in the air as well. But I love to kind of hear you guys' thoughts. I recently just read, Where'd You Go, Bernadette? And it's a beautiful story about a mother-daughter relationship. It's actually a movie adaptation that's, I believe it's on Hulu or Amazon. I just saw it a few days ago. It's with Kate Blanchett and Billy Crudup and Kristen Wiig. I think it's Kirsten Wiig. Might be saying her name wrong. But has anyone read Where'd You Go, Bernadette or seen the movie? I definitely recommend it. It was such a cute little film. I thought it had great morals and great themes. It just was so 
I, I loved it. I mean, it took me a while, to be honest, to get into the book. Um, for those of you who read the book, Where'd You Go, Bernadette? It's a different writing style. So they write it in email formats in a lot of the pages. And I was very, kind of took me a while to get into it. It was a little kind of hard to keep up at first, but about maybe like 10, 15 pages in, I just loved it. It was hard to put down. Let me see. I've been rewatching. Oh, Golden Girls. I love Golden Girls. I really love that one. You know, Carrie, I do the same thing. I I will watch old shows or movies. Um, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. Before I go to sleep, I'll usually put on like a TV show I've seen a bunch of times or a movie just to kind of like help me go to sleep, or especially with something I watch like on the loop. Um, a great read was Darling Girl. I've heard of Darling Girl. Okay. I'll have to check that out, Carrie. I haven't read Darling Girl yet. It sounds interesting, though. I did see, I think it was on um, LA Weekly. They gave it a review not too long ago. Oh, hey, Noelle. You know, now's the perfect time, Noelle, to uh, a lot of my friends, they were frogs right now because of quarantine, and I think they can keep the puppy, I think it's up to like a month or two right now. Uh, but yeah, I definitely look into that. There's a lot of, at least in California. Um, sorry, I forgot where you're located at, Noel. Um, in California, there's a lot of Los Angeles County adoption um, locations where you can take home a dog or a cat to just like foster until quarantine's over. And I believe now they're letting people who take in foster animals, they're letting them to like um, fully adopt them. So I would look into that wherever you're located. I think now would be the perfect time because, you know, as you can imagine, we have 4th of July coming up. So I know there's a lot of like dogs and cats or just animals in general that need like a home to stay in. Oh, Limitless. OK. I'm thinking of Limitless. Hi, Gwen. I'm Natalie. I'm thinking of Limitless, the the movie. If I'm not mistaken, Gwen, is that are you referring to the movie that they made with Bradley Cooper? I think a few years ago. It was like 2011. That's the one I'm thinking about with Limitless. And let me see what else are you guys watching? Golden Girls or oh, Hoarders? You know, Noel, I or Carrie, I watch Hoarders like a lot too. So I think Hulu actually has like I think like the first like five seasons up online. So it's definitely if you have Hulu, I recommend like putting that on and checking it out. <gasps> Yay! Someone read Where'd You Go, Bernadette? Okay, um, I think I'm saying your name right. Is it Camera? Um, I definitely, I'm so glad you're a fan of Where'd You Go, Bernadette. Um, definitely re recommend the movie. If you haven't seen the movie yet of Where'd You Go, Bernadette, please, please watch it. It's on Hulu. It's very, it's such a cute movie. It's, I definitely, I just, I loved it. I think it's one of those films. It's, if you're looking for a good film book, a good film like movie, Where'd You Go, Bernadette, definitely recommend. And the movie, I think the movie was underrated. I know the movie came out last year, um, the movie Where'd You Go, Bernadette, and um, as you notice, I think because it was an independent film, meaning it had like a big studio behind it, it wasn't a big budget. Um, I believe its budget was, I think, about 20 mil, which even though to like most of us, 20 mil is a lot, but movie world entertainment, 20 mil is very low budget. So I think that's why Where'd You Go, Bernadette didn't um, stay out in theaters too long. And I think it's actually getting more popular now because of the quarantine and because a lot of people are home right now or not working or just looking for a way to kind of escape, you know, the news and what's going on right now. All oh, the Real Housewives on Bravo. You know, Dana, I have to admit, I never was a fan of the Real Housewives. Um, Bravo, the TV network. My mom, actually, she's such a big fan of the Real Housewives. And I started binge watching uh, the Real Housewives of OC and Beverly Hills. And I actually really love them. I think it's, I, I'm not a big fan of reality TV, but I noticed when any reality TV shows on, I'm, I don't know how most of you are like, I will just sit there and just watch it. Like, it can be anything. I've done that with Jersey Shore. I've done that with, um, I'm thinking of the Kardashians. Uh, my mother, she's a big reality TV fan. So, I mean, it's kind of a running joke at this point. These past 10 years, I'll be like, Mom, are you watching this reality TV show? Like, don't watch it. Watch like a narrative or like a, you know, a narrative film or TV show. And I'll find myself sitting there watching like five to 10 episodes in one sitting so reality TV, it's a guilty pleasure, um, Dana. I, I love the Housewives. I think it's honestly, it's it watching those shows. You're kind of like it feels like you're watching. You don't know if it's like real or if it's staged. And I think that's what makes it enjoyable to watch reality TV because you just like to see kind of other people's lives are going on. And 
sometimes there's people who have a little bit more bubblier, kind of they're a little more extroverted, they're a little out there. So we get to see what they're doing on the day to day life. So I can see why. Yeah, Real Housewives, it's it's very addicting and I I can't turn it off. So once it's on, I'll sit there watching it like for a few hours. Yeah, Richard Linkletter, he's a great director. Um, hi, camera. I just saw your comment right now. I definitely recommend. So if you've seen um, Where'd You Go, Bernadette, the director of that film was Richard Linkletter. And he's such a great director. He's been around since, I want to say, the 1990. His first film, like a lot of independent filmmakers, came out of Sundance. And he was known for doing, I might be saying it wrong, but the first rotoscoping. It's, it's kind of like cartoon, but back in the 90s, they were sort of kind of like testing out this new technology. So that's why a lot of films, the cartoon in the 90s, look a little different from what we see today with today's films, especially like Disney, um, any type of like a Marvel, DC film. It's things back then looked a little different. But Richard Linklater, I definitely would recommend checking out his films. I'm a big fan of his work. If you're also looking for another good film movie, um, check out Richard Linklater's um, Before Sunrise trilogy. Uh, they're three different films. It's with Ethan, Ethan Hawke and it's with, I think, Julie Depley. And it's a love story it's over the course of, I think it's 25 years between two people that meet and I want to say the UK. And, and it, they kind of like run into each other like throughout the first two films. And we get to see how the relationship has changed or how it continues to develop and evolve. And it's such a cute movie. I mean, it's such a i think richard linkletter the director of before sunrise and where'd you go bernadette he makes very like good feel heartwarming very touching stories so definitely check out his um work if you're looking for something that's just like a good feel and has great things to it and i think all his acting and his movies are they're just fantastic um you know especially kate blanchett and where'd you go bernadette she was just exactly how i envisioned after reading the book oh the goldbergs hi heather i'm natalie um, the Goldbergs, I've seen a few episodes, actually. I think they just ended, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I could be wrong, though, but I know they did film that just locally down where I'm living at in Burbank at Warner Brothers. So I I loved it. I mean, I've seen a few episodes. I don't know the premise of the show, like necessarily like the, the B and C storylines, but it looks like a cute show. I definitely got to add that back to my list because that's something I haven't dabbled into for a little bit. Um. I've been trying to work more movies. Okay. I saw one of you just commented, um, foreign films. So I've been trying to watch more foreign films myself. I definitely, I actually tweeted a few, a few days ago. Um, I was looking for scary movies and I had a French, a lot of um, net predict right now on foreign films, other languages. Um, one film I could think of right now and I loved it was Parasite. Um, Parasite was a movie that just won the Academy Award for Best Picture this past year, and it's directed by, um, I'm going to say it wrong, but he's done Snowpiercer, and he's done, um, I think it's called Ozark. I could be saying it wrong again. Sorry for fans out there, this director. But I haven't seen um, some of his films yet. I've just seen Parasite, and it was such a great thriller. It was definitely, I don't want to give too much away, but when I went into the movie theaters to see Parasite a few months ago, I had no idea what the film was about. I had zero expectations, and it was such a great thriller. I mean, I please check out Parasite. I mean, I think it's on Amazon for free now because of um, it's been out for a while in quarantine. But it's such a great. It has very spot on themes, especially with what's going on right now in this world. Um, it deals with a lot of like middle class versus upper class, and um, kind of dabbles into the lower class, and they kind of show how those like worlds collide. So it's. Parasite was very scary spot on. I mean, I can definitely see why I won the Academy Awards. It very well deserved. Such a beautiful film. I mean, I personally, I will rewatch that like over and over again in the years to come because it was just such a very clever and such a very different story. And I think we need more films like that. Yes, Before Sunrise. I'm so glad you guys seen Before Sunrise. Um, yeah, I, Before Sunrise is so cute. Um, the sequel, I actually think out of all the Richard Linkletter Before Sunrise movies, I want to say number two, Sunset's my favorite. Um, I just think that ending, I don't give too much away, but that ending's so beautiful and it just like melts my heart as well. Um, I'm trying to think, H because I don't watch this much, I know. Hi, Carrie, I'm Natalie. Um, I haven't seen that show. Is it a show on HBO? Um, HBO, I haven't been able to access some of my 
content on HBO. I know HBO and a few other apps were crashing a few times over quarantine. So it's been a little kind of frustrating. I think just because more people are home and using the internet or, you know, they're just using more of like TV and media content. But I'll have to check that out, HBO. Um, speaking of HBO, has anyone seen, um, it might be, it's a little more on the risque and drama side and it does deal with some, um, some content I would definitely, um, uh, you know, look into first for watching it, Euphoria. Euphoria is with Zendaya. Zendaya was um, actress and singer from the Disney days. And um, I definitely would check out Euphoria if you're looking for a nice, it's not a nice, but it's a kind of a darker um, drama and teen show. Um, Euphoria definitely reminds me of Degrassi. I grew up on Degrassi. Um, I think Degrassi with, as we know, Aubrey Graham, who's now um, referred to as Drake, um, the rapper. And it also reminds me of Skins. Skins was another show that dealt with a lot of, of like teenagers, young adults, and some heavy subjects and some, you know, adult content related materials. So Euphoria, I definitely would recommend. I love Euphoria. Again, Euphoria is one of those shows I kind of watched after hearing word of mouth and seeing on, you know, social media. I think that was definitely a TV show that blew up through Instagram, at least on my end, because I had zero idea what it was until I saw Zendaya and a lot of the other actors in that show just post about it. Um, but I loved it. Um, I think Euphoria did a beautiful job kind of portraying a lot of realistic um, themes that go on today. They do deal with a lot of heavy subjects. So again, if you watch Euphoria, if you haven't seen it yet, um, I definitely would read about the premise first and kind of check out um, some of the, they do some warnings, uh, warnings for some episodes. So um, just before you check it out, because it could be a little trigger for some people um, just for some of the subjects they're talking about. And, and let me catch up with what you guys are writing. Oh, so scary movies. Hi, Heather. Um, I didn't forget about your comments. So I love scary movies. I don't know why. Scary movies used to, I was like one of those people that hated scary movies for a while. I, you know, was one of those people that watched um, the one film I always think about this day is The Exorcist. Um, I'd watched The Exorcist hiding under my blanket as a kid. And I think the first time I saw The Exorcist, I actually had a cross um, above the TV just to keep myself protected. I was so, I was just very traumatized after seeing that film. But I actually been very into a lot of the scary films right now. Um, I think because a lot has to do with um, just a recent film project I was supposed to do before quarantine hit. It was going to be a horror thriller. So definitely, I think it's kind of only natural. Um, whatever you're writing, whatever you're reading, you're just naturally going to be drawn to that similar subjects for a little bit. But scary movies, I definitely recommend. Um, but just a heads up, it's a little good, kind of campy gore fest. Um, I love Terrifier. Terrifier's um, about a, he's a serial killer named Arthur Clown. And I first watched it, kind of like many of you. I was stumbling on Netflix one late, you know, late at night. And I read the premise for Terrifier. And it's about a serial killer. He's a mime. So you don't hear him speak. You don't even hear him make a sound. And I was just looking at the premise thinking, okay, this kind of sounds weird. And I loved it. I mean, it's definitely terrifiers, definitely a film to check out if you're a fan of the 80s or the 90s horror films. You know, if you're definitely into um, films like Friday the 13th, Nightmare Before, almost Nightmare Before Christmas, Nightmare on Elm Street, I would definitely check out Terrifier. And I believe Terrifier, there's a sequel coming out next year. And I know uh, they're kind of their publicity and press they do for the film. They actually have Art the Clown um, do interviews. So definitely to YouTube some of the interviews for Terrifier. Um, the guy, the actor that plays Art the Clown, he's genius. Um, I mean, I honestly can tell if he was acting or that's just, you know, him acting like in real life because, again, he doesn't talk. So to me, that's why I like the scary movies. I think if your villain's very different or very, especially someone that doesn't have to do much talking or movement, I, it, that, those films scare me more personally because I feel that kind of almost – there's something creepier about like the silent killers in scary films. And I, definitely, which one did I watch recently I liked? There's one, I wanna say a horror film was by Blumhouse. Um, Blumhouse, the guy that did um, Get Out and he did Us. He made a, um, what was it? It was called Cam. So Cam's a, it, that was, I just watched it last night. It was, very creepy. Um, Cam's about a young woman in her 20s. She's a cam girl. And one day she's unable to log into her account for her cam website because there's a doppelganger, doppelganger of her that's taken over her account. 
So the film definitely, um, Cam, it's I think from 2018, it takes a very different turn. Um, when I first put it on, I thought, to be honest, I thought it was going to be like definitely cliche, but it's it's a great thriller. So I think that's why I enjoyed it because I love, I don't mind like gore fest and like um, scary films, but as long as there's like a story or if it's not predictable, I'm sure like many of you who like to watch, you know, different content as well. Um, you know, I'm, I'm all in. I, it, if it definitely has me questioning or if I'm like, hey, what just happened? Like, why did they do this? I thought they were going to do that, this character. Um, it's very, it was a fun ride, Cam. And triggers, oh, that's a good question. Um, so I'm going to read this question out loud. How do you manage triggers when you watch stuff? Almost everything triggers me. I barely consume any media. I get really bored often because of this. That's a great question. Um, for me, especially, um, I, I have a history with um, anxiety and depression. And for years, I actually could not watch films that dealt with that, that dealt with any type of uh, mental health um, issues or matters. Um, for a while, that used to trigger me. But I think today, um, what kind of made me, I think, be able to work through those triggers is, I think, knowing which films I should watch alone and then, or even TV shows and in which TV shows and films I can watch in a public setting, such as a movie theater or um, screening events, um, such an entertainment world. Um, there's a lot of events I've gone to where they've played all sorts of media, um, anything from scary to drama to comedy. So I think definitely to manage triggers when you're watching material is, at least for me, I still have this role. If it's a little too much to watch, um, it can be anything from a drama to a scary movie. I just give myself that 10 minute role. If you're still feeling like uncomfortable, just turn it off, try watching it another time or don't watch it at all. Just it's okay to, you know, to skip out on some media. Um, you know, we all handle certain situations differently, um, whether it's due to like um, our personal history or if it's just because, you know, it's a topic that does make us feel um, that is making us react very strongly. So um, that's definitely my advice. I've had that advice before over these years. It's, you know, can't watch something, you know, just keep that in the back of your mind. It's okay to turn it off or it's okay to like walk out of the theater and then, you know, you know, don't force yourself to watch something that's making you feel again, you know, uncomfortable or just it's making you feel like upset. Um, I think that's something that we shall continue to keep in mind, especially right now too. Um, but thank you. Oh, hi, Heather, clown free. Um, um, yeah, no, terrify the clown, the mind clown. Um, I would definitely, Heather, I would check out Cam. Cam was there, but it still creeped me out when I saw the film yesterday about the girl that has a doppelganger that takes over her account and she's not able to log into her cam account. It was a good little mystery and it was very, I think they shot it for like five mil. So again, you know, that's a lot of money to a lot of people in the real world, but I know with what is it um, cam, it was, you know, it's still like a low budget for a film to be shot that low. And I was very impressed with what they did too. Um, I'm thinking what else there is I saw. There's another movie I saw yesterday and I can't remember what it was called. But definitely Netflix. Um, I think with a lot of apps these days, Heather, if you don't, if you like scary movies like me, I know nowadays you can go, I think most of the, like if you have a fire stick or even like you just have certain apps like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, they do filter what type of scary movie it is. So they'll say scary movie. I know some will say gore fest or scary movie thriller. So um, definitely make sure to check those out because I think those will be a good way to um, filter out and kind of see what you're trying to avoid and what you're trying to watch as well. Um, I think I'm always... Sorry, guys. I'm just going to catch up on this one comment. Okay. How you... Yeah. So I agree with um, this comment. I think it's really important how movies, how story can make such impact in your emotional state, especially during these times. I, I definitely agree. I mean, thank you for commenting on that. I, I think it's especially right now, um, you know, I think most of us, you know, we've been this pandemic, you know, I'm sure many of you have heard this or seen it, you know, it's definitely very um, upsetting, you know, for a lot of us for different reasons. So I know even if we do like seek out to like media, whether it's a TV show, book or movie right now, um, or even podcasts or magazines, comic books, um, you know, we're still human. So I think we have to kind of remember that too. It's, you know, it's okay. You know, the media can't be a coping mechanism, you know, during this time. Um, I'm sure like many of you during quarantine, there's been some days I want to watch TV all day. And there's other days where I can't sit still no more than like a minute because I just have to like get up, go for a walk or, you know, I want to kind of be more like sociable. I want to like, you know, FaceTime with family, friends or um, 
you know, like many of you, I want to like go see family and friends, but it's so difficult right now. I mean, I'm definitely trying to stay quarantined as much as possible, um, especially because over here in California, the cases have been going up. I think today I read on the news, they said it was about, I think it's like 4,400 cases have peaked within the past 48 hours in California itself. So um, definitely, you know, those of you, um, my advice too with that is try not to read the news too much. Um, I just, I definitely had, um, I spoke to one of the mighty um, associates before hopping onto this call and um, their advice was, you know, trying to check the news once a week and I'm definitely going to try that myself just so that I'm guilty of being stuck in my phone a lot too. And especially being at home right now, um, you know, I'm guilty and I'm still trying to work on that, how to not be stuck on my phone all the time and checking social media or just like it's just seeing your messages. Um, um, doing okay right now. Um, you know, definitely, you know, we're all here to, you know, chat and help everyone through um, this hard time right now. I know this quarantine right now is very uh, triggery or it's making things a lot more stressful during this time. So please, you know, Karen, you know, please let us know. I mean, I mean, what have you been kind of doing to um, definitely to like, you know, cope or definitely to, you know, are, are you a fan of like certain content, media, films, TV, um, you know, definitely it's a safe area and, um, you know, the Mighty just chimed in too. So definitely care. I'd recommend checking out uh, what the Mighty message says right now too. Um, I'm going to read this question. I just got this into, have you watched a movie from Mexico? What do you think about the Mexican cinema for the recent years? I definitely, um, the one film that had a big impact on me and I'm sure like many of you, Roma, um, Roma was a film that came out, I think about two years ago and it won best foreign film for the Academy Awards. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I think I got best writing or best director. I don't remember off the top of my head, but Roma is definitely, I, Mexico uh, cinema, it's Mexican cinema. It's definitely one of my favorites. I'm Hispanic myself. I'm, um, Mexican and Spanish and also small percentage of Native Americans. So I for years, I didn't grow up on a lot of Mexican cinema. Um, growing up, I my family was very kind of more Americanized, so we watched a lot of more American film, a lot of Disney, a lot of um, romantic comedies and comedies were like watched in my household growing up. But as I got older, um, especially wanted to get into film myself, I started you know studying a lot of other directors from different countries or filmmakers, writers, uh, musicians, and Bromas. I mean, the last film that definitely stood out to me, it's a beautiful, I mean, story. I think if you're a big fan, like I am, if you love a lot of the technical side of camera work or any sort of, um, if you want to be like a director yourself or if you want to be like a cinematographer or the person who actually um, shoots the film with the camera, Roma is definitely something to check out. Um, Roma was a film, um, fun fact, the director, that was his passion project for years. And like many people in the entertainment field, a lot of directors have their to go to team members. So a lot of directors tend to work with the same um, cinematographer, um, producers, actors, and the director was unable to get his um, usual cameraman or cinematographer to help him shoot Roma. So uh, the director of Roma himself actually became the cinematographer on the project, and it's very impressive. It's a very um, beautiful film, and it's very I, I please check it out. I think it's on Netflix. It premiered on Netflix about two years ago, and I think it was like Netflix is like first one of their first like um, debut films they decided they're eligible for the Oscars. So Roma, I love it. Um, he also did a few more films that same director. Uh, he did one with. I'm trying to think the name of it. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's called, I think it's Children of Men. Uh, same director that did Roma did Children of Men. And that's with Clive, I think it's Clive Owen and Julianne Moore. So if you're a big fan of um, Roma, definitely please check out, you know, that director's other work. He does a lot of long take film, a lot of long take shoots. And a lot of long take is he does a lot of like, um, it's where you kind of stick on a character or you stick on a scene and you literally, the camera follows the actor. So um, that's actually very hard to do in film because it's a lot of um, choreographing and it's a lot of, you know, timing. So it's that's a very big um, 
a very majestic thing to work with um, when you film that way. So it's almost like a play. So that's why I think I'm a fan of that, the director of Roma, because he does a lot of his films, their stages after like plays. Um, and I think some of you might've seen that in Birdman. Birdman's another similar film too, where they filmed, um, there was a, what is a story with Michael Keaton, Emma Stone, Edward Norton's about, you know, the theater life and they film it as if like, it's kind of like you're watching like a play um, roll out in front of you. So definitely those films are such great work. I mean, not only story-wise, but technical wise camera work i mean i'm a fan of like anything that has long takes um so definitely feel free to comment if you know any other films that are like roma birdman that do a lot of that long take um kind of like play like setting where you see like kind of like the actors are sort of um the ones that are like um motivating the camera so that's very hard to do any good netflix shows i'm watching hi dana i'm natalie um well, i don't know if it's on netflix um but i was watching I just finished the first season of 911. It's a Ryan Murphy show. Um, it's with Connie Britton and it's with Angela Bassett. And it's a good show. I think it's on Fox. I'm I'm not mistaken, but Netflix or Hulu, they had the first they had the first season, third season up. So I'm actually on season two of 911. Um, and 911, I definitely recommend it. If you're a big fan of Ryan Murphy, Ryan Murphy, of course, he's known for doing shows like Glee, Nip Tuck, American Horror Story. Um, he just recently just did Hollywood, which is on Netflix and the politician, um, Ryan Murphy. I love his shows. I mean, I feel like I just, I mean, whatever he makes Ryan Murphy, I'm just, I'm there like watching his shows and movies. I it's, he's such a great, I think writer, he definitely knows character and, um, he's also another filmmaker too. So, uh, Ryan Murphy actually directed Eat, Pray, Love with Julia Roberts. And he also did this very i love this indie film it's an independent film from a few years ago called running with scissors um based on a true story about a dysfunctional family and kind of it's i think it's a little re relatable so definitely read about running with scissors before you watch it um, just in case it has any um themes or uh possible triggers that might come up but running with scissors with an benny it's about a young boy he is actually divorced and Running With Scissors, I think what makes that film so beautiful, it was they definitely balance the dramatic stuff that's going on, like a lot of the mature themes. And uh, it's also very humorous. There's a lot of comedy in there, too, which I think a lot of those films can use that deal with heavy subject. They also find um, funny moments, even though it's, you know, dark matter or heavy subject that a character or, or characters are going through. Um, you know, um, Netflix and Hulu, I actually definitely think those are the two platforms I would recommend. Um, HBO, I would definitely check out HBO. Um, HBO, I just got the app, um, I think about a year ago. Um, I was someone that had cable for about like, you know, gosh, 15 years. Um, you know, even when I was living at home with my my family. I mean, we didn't do, we all we did was just Netflix at the time, but we actually cut the cord on our cable as well. Um, about like five years ago, once um, Netflix kind of started blowing up and once you can get the apps on on demand or even on like other like um, third party platforms like Hulu, Amazon. So I definitely recommend looking to HBO. Um, HBO, they right now they have a lot of um, BLM films right now um, coming out. I know one film I'm looking forward to um, watching after I finish the book is The Hate You Give. Um, and the book right now, too, that's actually the book right now I'm reading is The Hate You Give. Um, let me actually try to grab it real quick. Um, so this one I'm actually reading, um, Angie Thomas, this is the author, The Hate Chicken, um, it's a story about a teacher, it's where she learns to find her voice after her, um, one of her childhood best friends is gunned down by a police officer, and it's a movie too, and I heard the movie's very good, so no spoilers, I haven't seen the movie yet, but it's, right now the book's very, it's very well written, um, it's a young adult fiction, but Honestly, I think the hate she gives should be considered. Um, I think it's appropriate for all ages, just because we do see a lot of things going on in there that's very common um, in today's world. Um, learning how to, how to stand your ground, learning how to find your voice or not being afraid to speak up. I think that's so important, especially those are the kind of books and movies and TV shows I'm usually attracted to. Um, you know, they're very uplifting, inspiring, and you want to definitely root for the character. I think that's what's always like a good thing with these um, media outlets today. Um, what movies are, I only read this one. What are the movies with stories about women that have, a, that have made a good impact in your mental health? Oh, that's a good question. Um, 
I'm trying to think. Uh, you know, I actually, I would throw Where'd You Go Bernadette into that category um, without giving too much away, but Where'd You, Do, Where'd you Go Bernadette, even though it's a, I consider the film being like a family version of the book. The book does go more into details about some mental health um, issues that we see one of the characters going through. So it does touch upon, um, the book does touch upon mental health a lot and the movie does um, dabble into it briefly about that without giving too much away. Uh, so I would check it out. Um, I think because Bernadette, she's such a she's such a fun character. She's witty, she's clever. Um, she embraces who she is. So I think that's what makes her character, at least for me, that's what I loved about Where'd You Go Bernadette because Bernadette, the main character, who's portrayed by the wonderful um, Kate Blanchett in the film adaptation, Bernadette's someone who doesn't like play by, she doesn't play by the rules, meaning she won't fake anything. She won't pretend to be your friend. She won't pretend to like you. She doesn't like someone. She's flat out honest about that. And to me, I think that's, I actually think that's inspiring to see because I feel like that's a very strong character um, to see. And then her daughter's also someone that looks up to her. So the, even the daughter who B, her name is, um, B is very like a strong character. And she's only like, I want to say like 11 or 12 in the book. In the movie, they might have aged her, I think, to like 13, 14, just to make her a little older. Um, and I'm trying to think what else there is. Um, Kirsten Wig, she's actually um, a great dramatic actress. Kirsten Wig, some of you might know her from SNL. Um, she also did the funny film on um, Bridesmaids a few years ago. But she did a film called Welcome to Me. And there's another film she did. It's on Netflix called, I think it's called Hate Ship, Love Ship. And they're both drama comedies, but definitely Welcome to Me is a little bit of a darker film that deals with a lot of mental health and is about Kirsten Wig plays this woman that inherits uh, money from the lottery and she decides to create her own reality tv show which is called welcome to me and there's really no premise to her reality show it's just her doing different things each day on the show but it does go into a lot of um some heavy subjects and i definitely i loved it i mean i thought it was such a great portrayal of mental health um I think her character, she might have, I think it was bipolar disorder, but I haven't seen it for a while, but I definitely kind of talking about, I want to definitely give it another watch, um, hopefully sometime this weekend. And another one I just saw too, um, I actually had a friend recommend it to me and it has another very strong, strong acting, beautiful story. It was called Horse Girl. Horse Girl's on Netflix right now. It's with Alison Brie. Um, very similar to Welcome to Me and I think Hate Ship, Love Ship. It deals with a lot of like mental health. It talks a lot about um, kind of subject that could be maybe a little triggery. So I, I know with Horse Girl, when I first watched it, um, I was actually texting a friend because there were some triggery moments for me, but there's nothing in terms of graphic in the film. I think it's just some of like the themes that we see the main character that Alison Brie, Alison Brie plays, excuse me, um, go through throughout the movie. But it was actually a very well done movie. Um, Horse Girl kind of deals with a lot of the drama meets fantastical side. So definitely check it out, Horse Girl. It, it, it blew me away. Um, I wasn't really interested in first seeing it. And I had a friend about two weeks ago text me saying, hey, he's like, you should watch Horse Girl. Those are the mental health. And I think you'll appreciate like the pacing of the film and the editing. So I'm really glad my friend, um, if he's on here, Kevin, my friend Kevin actually recommended. So check out Horse Girl. Um, I would say read about it first um, in case, you know, you're a little worried about some of the films doing like mental health subjects or any type of recovery um, things going on. But it was a very well done story. And um, also, fun fact, Alison Brie, Alison Brie, the girl who plays the lead in Horse Girl, she co-wrote the script. So um, they just came out of Sundance this past January. So it's it's a very, I loved it. Um, it's definitely something I'll check out again and again, because i actually looking into buying the DVD. It's one of those I would love to collect. Oh, hi, Ashley. Um, sorry for just seeing your 911. Um, so 911, um, for those of you who are just chiming in, um, I'm a big 911 fan. Um, it's a TV show on Fox. It's a show by Ryan Murphy. And I actually, the second season, if I can say this, I actually had a friend send me a website where you can stream it for free. Um, I'll have to find it. Um, I'll have to probably like post about it. So I think it was called, um, I think it's like ftm.com, but um there's also another safer website if you want to watch the second season ashley of 911 or anyone who's looking to watch 911 and you're trying to find season two um ttv is another one that has um they usually will stream like episodes especially like older shows that have been out for a while on their app so ashley um anyone else who likes 911 try them um, ttv um if you have the fire stick or um you want to watch on a computer it's just ttv.com so you should be able to find the second season and 
I think all the, I think there's like 20 episodes, all 20 should be there. Yes. Hi, thank you for with running with scissors. So that is the author's name, Augustine. Um, love that movie. Um, love that. I haven't read the book yet, but it is based on um, running with scissors. Going back to my running with scissors, another Ryan Murphy um, film. He directed it and I think he co-wrote it too. Um, running with scissors. It deals with a lot of, um, there's kind of like the dysfunctional family. It deals with a teenager who's taken in by a psychiatrist after his parents divorce. But Running With Scissors actually is based on a memoir. Um, the character's name is Augustine. So um, definitely haven't checked out the book yet, but I want to. Um, those of you who read the book, please comment. Um, what did you think about the book? What did you think about the movie adaptation? Oh, Silver Lightning's Playbook. Hi, Dana. Um, Silver Lightning's Playbook, you know, I'll be honest. That was a film... I couldn't get in the first time um, and I love Jennifer Lawrence. I love Bradley Cooper. Um, you know, I love Robert De Niro and Jackie Weaver. Um, such a fantastic cast. That's such a strong, you know, definitely one of the strongest actings I've seen out today, but several lines of the book, I actually appreciated more um, the story and just the character study as I watched it more over the years. Um, several lines of the playbook, um, check it out. It's a film. It deals with, um, I'm trying without giving too much away, but it deals with um, Bradley Cooper plays, um, a guy that gets out of rehab and he's learning how to build his life back after splitting up from his wife. And he encounters with a new friend played by the wonderful Jennifer Lawrence and they enter this dance competition together. But Silver Lines Playbook, it's a very, very beautiful film. I, I, I definitely loved it. Um, and to answer your question, I think Jennifer Lawrence, the, the character she plays in Silver Lines Playbook is another strong um, female character. Um, I definitely think what makes her character so relatable is she's someone again, like we see with a lot of other films or TV shows, um, you know, Jennifer Lawrence's character in Silver Lines Playbook, she's um, very strong will. She has no shame, you know, of her past, what she's gone through. She acknowledges like her own troubles, her own worries. And she also, there's a beautiful scene in Silver Lines Playbook. I love it personally. There's a diner scene where her and Bradley Cooper, let's just say get into a heated argument. And it's one of the best, I think, performances I've seen with Jennifer Lawrence. She stands her ground and she's very um, vocal in how she feels about being called out on some things. So definitely please check it out. Silver Lines Playbook if you have it. It's, it's a good balance again of um, drama and comedy. It can be funny and it's also sad, but I think it's one of those films where it interweaves where they make even the darker scenes still funny. Cause there's always like that one character that kind of comes in and they're throwing jokes or, you know, they're kind of speaking their mind that you're just like, wait, they're kind of just, you know, no shame. They're just like calling everyone out. So definitely check that out. Okay, The Girl Dragon Tattoo, that's another good one with Rooney Mara. Um, I haven't read the book yet, Girl Dragon Tattoo, um, but love to hear your comments and thoughts. Um, those of you who read the book, um, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and you've seen the movie, um, did you like one over the other? Did you see any differences? Um, or did you even see the Swedish version? I haven't seen the Swedish version yet. So that one's with, I think, Numi Pierce. Um, she's now doing a lot of more Americanized or American films, but I think she was um, the first... Um, girl Dragon Tattoo. Um, she did the first three films, I think in the early to mid 2000s before they did the um, US version with Rooney Mara. Um, but I loved Rooney in that film. Um, I love Rooney Mara. Rooney Mara is one of my favorite actresses. I think she's such a beautiful, um, definitely just, she seems to know how to like pull those roles off, including Girl Dragon Tattoo, how to be vulnerable, but also how to like kick butt at the same time. So Definitely check out that movie if you haven't. Um, it's a film by David Fincher. David Fincher is one of my favorite film directors, and he's also now doing TV as well. But um, just forewarning, David Fincher does tend to make a lot of more um, heavier subject um, projects. So Girl Checked Out too. they do have a, a, a scene that can be considered notorious that does deal with um, sexual assault. So please, you know, do, uh, do your research before watching it. Or, and um, it's one of those films um, to kind of answer, I had a, one of you guys chime in, how do you deal with triggers while watching certain materials, film, TV, or even reading a book? Um, Girl Dragged Out too, because everyone was kind of talking about like how graphic some of the scenes were. I actually decided to see that film at home. I actually had a screener from a sag After union. Um, they usually mail at screeners to you around award season time. So I think kind of knowing if you know what a film's dealing with or a TV show, I would say watch it in your, the comfort of your home or wherever you feel safe. So I did that with the girl trying that too. And it felt a lot more um, less traumatizing to watch, if I can be honest. Um, just because for me, if there was a scene that was hard to watch, I would just get up and get out of the room or I can just honestly fast forward. But 
Um, I love the film. Um, very powerful. Uh, very, you know, I think she's another strong character that we, I'm hoping they make a sequel with Rudy Mara with Girl Dragon Tattoo. I would love to see her um, tackling on that role again, but um, only time will tell, especially with what's going on right now um, with entertainment kind of being on hold. Okay, I'm going to read your me talk pretty one day. Okay. Um, thanks for the recommendation, Gwen. Um, Augustine's book. I haven't read that yet. Um, so I haven't read his book, Augustine, the guy that uh, wrote Running With Scissors, that's now a movie. I, I'll check it out. Um, I'm definitely looking to pick up on my books. Um, I don't know how many of you have been guilty, but I was uh, purchasing a few books myself during this quarantine, and I, you know, finally been able to get around to them. Um, I'm actually right now I'm planning to read the new Hunger Games book. I just bought it like two weeks ago, but I definitely wanted to read The Hate You Give first. Um, just to kind of, um, Andrew Thomas, she's such a beautiful writer. Um, after Hate You Give, I'm going to dive into the new Hunger Games book and me talk pretty one day. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be sure to get that because that sounds like a very, I, I mean, I love Running With Scissors, um, the movie, so I can only imagine that the writing style is very witty and clever um, in his book as well. Let me see. Um, I was looking for movies that talk about borderline disorder, and I found that most movies have such a bad perception, at least for me. And I really believe there's other things about people who live with that. I would be great to watch a movie who could talk about that with other perception. Um, that's a very um, great comment. Um, thank you, too, for pointing that out. So I noticed probably most of you here, um, I myself, you know, I'm a fan of films that deal with a lot of mental health um, or social issues. So I, I, it's a frustrating topic. I think films that deal with any sort of, uh, I don't know, I think social issues, especially when it comes to like mental health, anxiety, depression, um, you know, I, I'm thinking any type of thing that's talked about in real life, but they're not kind of not really. Um, I do agree. We do see a lot of content, unfortunately, that does kind of stigmatize a lot of certain subjects. Um, my only thought, I mean, honestly, I think it's just kind of knowing sometimes, unfortunately, there are people who see certain uh, mental health or social issues in one light, that's the way they're going to tell their, their story, their version. So I would just keep aware if, you know, if there's a film or a TV show or a book you read that does deal with um, some social issues, including mental health, and it does seem like it's being stigmatized, um, just maybe try to see it from, um, maybe that's the way the writer and or the filmmaker, that's how they see it because that's kind of how they grew up, just kind of knowing that subject. Um, you know, I've been guilty where I used to take those, um, or maybe still am like where I used to take them very personal, um, especially if there's a lot of films that deal with a lot of um, anxiety or some type of recovery mode. It always felt like there was a one light of someone who is in recovery mode. They're destined to be doomed. And I, I take those personal because I'm also like, well, that's not true. You know, it's, you know, it, they should also show like, hey, maybe there should be one character story versus the whole entire story. Maybe they should have different, you know, versions of characters going through all sorts of like stages if it's dealing with the, again that social issues topic so i i'm still learning myself too i mean that's a great comment you pointed out i'm i'm learning um not to take it so personal or hey you know especially if you're watching it at home you can just turn it off if it's something you're like this is feeling offensive this is feeling like very stigmatized you know just one light we don't get another side of the story so definitely um please you know i urge you to just you know, always turn it off or nowadays because there's a lot of film entertainment media boards you can always comment and leave your review and i think the reviews actually would be a good way to kind of let out your thoughts and opinions on some of these films and tvs and books even if you feel like you disagree with something um i feel with the writer and or filmmaker sees that um they'll understand that you know they, they gotta take feedback themselves if they're putting out any sort of content there um and that's also coming from personal experience with me i'm sure like many of you who are writers or creators yourselves um you'll know when it's um if comment that someone's making because they have a question on something or if they're just you know they're not being nice about the work so definitely take advantage um a website i use to check out um a lot of um, films and tv shows is imdb and that's imdb.com um that's how i look up a lot of films um before watching it that's how i looked up horse girl the netflix movie with Alison brie before watching it, it gives you a synopsis, a log line, and it'll show you a few movie stills and posters, and they show you which actors are in it and, you know, crew members as well. And they won a bunch of awards. You'll get to see which awards they won and or what they're nominated for. Um, nice. Um, so, yeah, book recommendations. Um, 
Book recommendations, I definitely would recommend Rodrigo Bernadette. Um, I'm a big fan of the author Ellen Hopkins. Uh, for those of you who love um, young adult fiction crossover books, I I want to say I think in 2002, and that was a book. I think that was on one of my like school reading lists that we could read and um, do like a book report on and. Um, Alan Hopkins, uh, she's a great writer. She writes um, in poetry format. So if you're a fan of poetry, poems, definitely check out any work by Alan Hopkins. I just finished reading her book, Perfect, which deals with, um, diff it does with um, multi-character. So it, each chapter is a new character. So it's like chapter one's Andre, chapter two is Kara, and they're all dealing with the theme around how to be perfect. But with Alan Hopkins, what I love is she tackles on a lot of social issues, including mental health. Um, including addiction, including recovery. And she also, she portrays in different lights. So her stories all deal with like multiple characters and we get to see how the worlds collide by the end of each book, but very beautifully written. Please check it out. I mean, Alan Hopkins, she's a great writer. I mean, she's one of those, I, she's so underrated. I, I think I posted about finishing her book perfect two days ago on Instagram and she liked it. And I fangirled out. She's one of those authors. Like I would just, I would love to meet one day. Um, and she has about like, I think 17 books out. So Check Amazon or Barnes and Nobles. Um, I think right now her books are coming in packages. So a lot of them are being like 20 bucks for like three to five, which I definitely Amazon is my go to for checking out books um, or even audiobooks, Kindles, I think because right now everything's like a discount with the quarantine. And another book, I'm thinking what else did I just read? I just read another book I read was it's a, it's a nonfiction one. It's called Nickel and Dimed. I read it um, a few months ago and it's a book I read in college, but it's another one. It's about an author named Barbara. She uh, pretends to live the life of a middle-class worker. So she works at different jobs like Walmart, I think Denny's. And then she does this for about like a year, year and a half. And then she journals each day about how, you know, the kind of everyday um, person, how they try to live, you know, paycheck to paycheck. And it's a great story it's a nonfiction. it was i think written in the 80s so she actually um her book kind of it was blowing up around the time i was back in school so i definitely recommend it it was it's one of those films it's uh, or one of those films i'm sorry it's one of those books that it deals with a lot of um real world topics that i think are forever and be talked about and i think kind of getting seeing the author actually go out there and put herself in that situation it was a very like hard book to read at times because you feel her pain. It's it's even though she acknowledges that she's still privileged because she's not really low um, from the lower work or middle class. I think she's actually upper class. She does talk about how she has sympathy for a lot of the people she encounters throughout her journey. So Nickel and Dimed, it's a great book. Um, again, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. I'll check that out for sure. Patricia and Tess. OK, um, crime fiction novels. Um, thanks, Ashley, for the recommendation. I'll have to check that out. Um, I haven't checked out a crime novel for a while. It's been a minute um, right now because of like just some work stuff. I've been catching a lot of like young adult fiction um, crossovers, but I'll be sure to check it out. Anyone else have any crime book recommendations or any book recommendations in general? Um, I don't know about some of you guys, but I'm very, I'm a big fan of books that are either film adaptations or they're about to become film adaptations. Um, that's how I became a fan of Where'd You Go, Bernadette. When I heard Richard Linklater was going to direct that, I was like, I got to find this book. I got to buy it. I have to like finish it before it's done. You know, the film's done. Um, oh, when of you guys read Nickel and Dimed? It is a great book. Okay, sorry, I like, I geek out because um, Nickel and Dimed is one of those books. It's one of my favorites, but I feel like a lot of people haven't read it and it's such an underrated book, but please check it out. Um, it's just, it's a great book. It's, it's just, I don't give out too much away, but it deals with just such important social issues. And I just think it's very well written. It's almost, it's one of those books I, they should make into a movie. I don't know if it is or if they've tried it in the past, but it's very good. Oh, hi, Gwen. Hidden Figures. I just saw the movie. The movie was very good. Oh, and The Shack. I did see The Shack. Um, if you're talking about the film adaptation, um, I think it's a little faith-based. I did re see both movies, excuse me, but I haven't read the books yet. Um, I think Hidden Figures is a book too, and this shock, if I'm mistaken. But I'll be sure to check it out. Let's see if they are based on anything. Um, another recommendation I had, um, I just saw it recently, um, Just Mercy. Um, so the shock, Dana, um, the co-writer of the shock, Des uh, Daniel Destin, I think it's Cretan, I'm saying his name right. He uh, directed this film and wrote Just Mercy. It was um, It's with Jamie Foxx, 
Michael B. Jordan, Brie Larson. Um, check it out. It's actually, it's a film right now that they have online for free on Amazon because of um, all the protests that were going on. And it does deal with, um, Jamie Foxx plays this, um, he's a convicted felon for a crime he didn't do. And Michael B. Jordan is the young lawyer who just got out of college. He's the one that's going to help get um, Jamie Foxx's character out of prison. Uh, very beautiful film. I mean, it's I'm, I'm a fan of the director and I love Brie Larson. Um, fun fact, um, Jess Mercy, the Brie Larson who plays one of the supporting characters and the director of that film, they did a film called Short Term 12 back in early 2000, I think 2012. Um, so if you're a fan of good, heartfelt, independent dramas, check out Short Term 12. Um, it's a very great film. It's actually, I think it was Brie Larson who plays Captain America, as most of us know her as. Uh, it was Brie Larson's first um, leading role, Short Term 12. So um, very inspiring movie. Um, very beautiful. Um, I definitely, the shock, I forgot Justin, the director of Just Mercy, he co-wrote that film. So I'm definitely going to check those um, check those out again because it's been a minute. But I know, I think it was like one of those films that came and went because they're independent based. So they didn't have a big theatrical release. Um, Hidden Figures, um, Janelle, I mean, she's a great actress. Um, I think Janelle Monet, she's been known for doing music for a little bit. But she actually, um, yeah, she was really, she was amazing in Hidden Figures. I honestly didn't know that was her, like, until midway. Um, but if you're a fan of um, Janelle Monet, who's singer, she's now, like, doing a lot of acting work, um, check out Homecoming, Homecoming Season 2. It's on Amazon. Um, if you guys don't know what Homecoming is, it was a show that came out, I think, two years ago with Julia Roberts. It's um, Amazon Prime. It's about a, a facility called Homecoming. It's a program that has former Marines, uh, former uh, men in the Army, um, former vets that go to this facility to help kind of cure a lot of their um, PTSD or a lot of like emotional distress they might be going through after being in the war or being out on like combat fields. But it's also good, um, kind of has this like sci-fi vibe to it. Um, so the creator of Homecoming, um, right now their season two is just premiering, that's with Janelle Monae. Um, he, the creator of Homecoming is a creator of uh, Mr. Robot. I haven't seen Mr. Robot yet, but I heard Mr. Robot is another show that's very like kind of sci-fi thriller, good drama and very good guilty pleasure. But definitely check out Homecoming. I It's like a 30 minute I think episode they're very short and I finished like the first season like in one sitting but it's the, the if you're a fan of like camera work and um any type of like kind of moody feel check it out because the first season and so far the second season they give out like similar like tones and it, they definitely have a signature look to this series and I, I'm a fan of it I mean it's a very awesome I mean show and I'm trying to think of other book recs because I know most of us here um there's so much right now going on with the media Okay. You know, I'll, I'll be sure to check out the book with Hidden Figures. Interesting. So um, before we wrap up, I wanted to know, um, so a lot of these films and books, I'm curious to hear um, anyone's thoughts on this, because I know, you, I think you're the first to say the book of Hidden Figures is good, but the movie has much more details. Because usually I always find with books that I read, and when I see the, the film adaptation of that book, I usually find that the films have less things um, taken out um, for, you know, timing purposes. And sometimes for um, studios, sometimes they will want like certain things done in a different way that we don't see in the book. But I think I have never read a book where um, that had less details than the movie did. Um, so I'm, I'm curious, have any of you read a book um, that actually where the movie did it more justice, where the movie actually had maybe more details about a character or more scenes um, cause I haven't come across those yet. Usually it's, it's been the reverse where the book has, you'll be watching the film and you're like, okay, they took out this chapter or they took out this character to, you know, further progress the show or, you know, film as well. But that's interesting. Um, another show I wanted to talk about real quick, um, just cause it came out and, um, I'll try to stay away from some of the, the things that it deals with. Um, just cause I know there was a lot of backlash. I just saw, um, the fourth season of the 13 reasons why uh be curious to hear your guys' thoughts on that because um i i'm a big instagram um user and i kind of posted my thoughts i think about two weeks ago on it but um 13 reasons why i thought that was like the first tv show that actually had i think i uh, let me take that back actually that was a show that actually had added i believe in character in to the show itself that wasn't in the book just to make it um i think to kind of dramatize some scenes a little bit more 
But I was curious to hear your thoughts on this season because um, 13 Reasons Why, I'll be honest, I I like the first three seasons. I see what they're trying to do in terms of the social issues or I, I understand what the creators are doing, but I can also see why that show gets misled a lot of the times. But, but um, if you haven't checked out 13 Reasons Why or if you are someone that is curious to watch it, if you do watch it, um, please go to, I think it's 13reasonswhy.org. They do have... Um, the appropriate resources that deal with mental health um, and recovery sources to read before you start watching. So um, if you're definitely like kind of curious about it, I would check out their website first. But um, this past season, I wasn't a fan. Um, you know, for those of you who do like the show, sorry, just I wasn't a fan of the fourth season. It To me, um, not to get so much in details, I thought the 13 Reasons Why fourth season, it felt a little exploitive to me, um, which is interesting because that was the first time I watched a, um, a TV show or movie that dealt with mental health or some sort of recovery stage that we see multiple characters going through where I just felt like it, it just felt too exploitive. Like I felt like the kind of the writers were trying to make things more shocking than the last storyline, if that makes sense. So it was kind of, I was kind of a little disappointed, but you know, um, at the end of the day, I have to give the creators of that show um, kudos for tackling on a very, um, subjects are very sensitive or um they're very difficult i think to portray without upsetting i think um the fans of the book or you know people in general oh yeah see the fourth season yeah dana sorry i just wasn't a fan of the fourth season but um it was still sad i think um 14 re or 13 reasons why i remember watching it um you know a few years ago and i remember i was watching it by myself and you know i, I was it was very it, there's upsetting scenes in there but i think it's stuff i expected to see because i read the book probably like many of you um i did love the book i read it like in a uh, sitting one so um i was sad to see though um any show that ends i'm always sad to see it go because i definitely um i definitely you know want to see uh you know shows continue but of course it uh if you know they can't always last forever um Okay, guys, it looks like we hit the hour, um, but before we wrapped up, um, please leave your comments. Um, this video should be up on Facebook, so please comment um, any books, uh, TV shows, movies that you just saw that you love or that you saw, especially right now during quarantine, um, whether they're dramas, um, comedies or comedy dramas, sci-fi, if you're a fan of scary films. Um, I'll actually go ahead and um, if you have Instagram or Twitter, um, give me a follow. My Instagram is Nat Christine Rod. My Twitter is Nat Chris Rod. I'll be sure to be um, recommending um, some other medias uh, I've been watching or catching up with during this quarantine. But definitely, um, yeah, please, you know, share what you're reading or what you're watching. I'd love to hear um, uh, what you guys are like doing right now. And of course, uh, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But uh, we do have to wrap up. Um, thanks again for all being here. And, you know, I hope to talk to you all soon and take care.